Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. I have devastating news from Chanel to share with you. Uh, it has come to my attention from several sources, and I would like to say thank you to one of my wonderful members and subscribers of my channel, Yana Klar, who uh, sent me um, an email kind of alerting me of something. Uh, that something I have later confirmed with my Chanel sales associate, as well as a Chanel beauty boutique manager. Now, I really am trying to wrap my head around this. I'm really trying very hard to understand why this has happened. So, um, where to begin? Well, first subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week on my main channel. Come follow me. There, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged in just my opinion. You heard it here first. Chanel is discontinuing all of their Les Exclusives extras. Cue in the picture. This is a photo I took several years ago. Uh, these are wonderful sunglasses from the Haute Couture 2007 Chanel collection during Carl's era. And I have three examples of my personal collection, photo taken by yours truly. Les Exclusives, Parfum, Jersey, Queer de Russie, number 22. I am shocked. So I got the email from Yana. Thank you, Yana, so much. Thank you for being an angel and letting me know. And then I immediately wrote my Chanel boutique sales associate, the store manager, and yes, they confirmed. At first, I thought they're discontinuing all their extras, all of their parfums, including Chanel number no. 5. But no, uh, I received confirmation from my store manager, beauty boutique manager, that Chanel um, number no. five is not going to be discontinued. The extra will still be in production. Like their mass released extras will still be in production, but they discontinued a ton of their mass released extras. You know, Chance uh, Parfum is gone. Allure Sensuelle Parfum is gone. I think even Allure Parfum is gone. We only have Coco Mademoiselle Parfum left. Chanel number no. five, Parfum. Chanel number no. 19. I think even Coco is gone. Coco Noir is gone. The Parfum. We're talking just about the extra concentrations, you guys. We're not talking about the Eau de Toilettes, Eau de Parfums, and Colognes. Chanel doesn't even have Cologne anymore. They've discontinued all the Colognes. So my sales associate slash manager said, the Les Exclusives extras have got the chopper. Extra means parfum. Okay, so this thing here, parfum, is the extra. It's just a different word for the same thing. And in French, they use parfum, but they also use extra. Guerlain loves to use extra to define, to describe a parfum. It's the kind of highest concentration of essential oils, lower concentration of water and alcohol in a fragrance. So it's kind of a special condensed version of a fragrance. Okay. I do not know. You guys, it's not that simple. Mahora is saying, like, what do they expect? Uh, sorry, Sweet Things is saying, they are, they are too expensive. What do they expect? Of course, they don't sell. It's not that simple, Sweet Things. It's not that simple. Let me explain to you why. I think the situation is worse. And I really hope this is not the case. Okay. 
follow me here. This is a little bit, now we're going into advanced territories here. So try to follow me. Chanel, just a couple of months ago, released within the Les Exclusives Extrait slash Parfum range, they've released their giant bottles of Sycamore, Coromandel, Beige, Gardenia was already available a while ago in the giant bottles. Not Factice, the actual Extraits and Parfums. And yes, these 15 milliliter parfums were sold out since months. They've been gone from the Chanel website. Like you click on the product and it says not available. You know, if you want, click here. We can notify you when they become available again. But also Chanel number 19 has been gone for months and, and number five has been gone for months. So I thought they're just going to refresh somehow. In the meanwhile, so speculations were a brewing months ago already, like whether or not they're going to discontinue all their Les Exclusives or all of their extras. Sorry, not Les Exclusives, all of the extras. And I thought to myself, no, they're probably just having some issues like they, they like they had with uh, Cristal Overt back in the day during the pandemic where certain raw materials were not available or glass was not available to make the bottles. But then, in the midst of the 15 milliliter parfums of the Les Exclusives being gone from the website, like not available, Chanel launches these ginormous 900 milliliter, 450 milliliter, 225 milliliter bottles of the Les Exclusives extraits of some of the best sellers. And why would they launch these huge bottles right before they discontinue all of their Les Exclusives Parfums? Why? To use up all the liquid, all the perfume left, so they put them in the big bottles and sell those off, you know, just to end the production? No, I don't think that's the case. Although it would be funny if that were the case. But no, I don't think that's the case. I hope I'm wrong. And everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. I hope I'm wrong about this, but it's, I almost feel like they're trying to create an elite thing with these extras. How terrible would that be if they purposefully discontinued the 15 milliliter bottles? that are already super expensive. They're around about $300 per bottle. Could you imagine if they discontinue the, and they are, <laughs> and then they only manufacture the $10,000 giant bottles. They keep manufact. Imagine if they kept manufacturing just the giant 900 milliliter, 450 milliliter, 225 milliliter parfums, extraits of the Les Exclusives, but stopped manufacturing the 15 mils. So now, if that is true, they literally are opening up the extras only to the ultra rich. I mean, who has 10,000 plus dollars <laughs> to spend on one bottle of perfume? Albeit it's a huge bottle, but if you don't have an option to purchase a smaller quantity, they're like, well, it's this or nothing. Kev is asking, how do you even use bottles that are that big? Usually they're collector pieces. Usually you don't use them. I mean, they're just, they're ginormous. It's almost one liter of product and the stopper is huge and you kind of, you lift the stopper, you get like a drop the size of your eyeball. And like, I... Debbie's like, yes, yeah, a perfume or a bag. Yeah, if they, they both cost $10,000 at this point. I am shocked. But interesting, when I wrote... Uh, the uh, sales associate um, from Chanel 
I said, well, oh my gosh, I just got news that the extras are being discontinued. And the sales associate answered, yep, they are all of them. And I was like, what do you mean all of them? Like also number five or like the Les Exclusives only? And then I got response, no, only the Les Exclusives, wink. Then I wrote back, but why, why would Chanel do this now? Why are they discontinuing these if they just launched them in the big giant bottles? And to that question, I got no answer from the sales associate. And it's the fact that I got no answer to that question from my sales associate that I thought, oh, they're, so they're, they're not allowed to tell me something. They're not allowed to tell me that the giant bottles are not being discontinued, maybe. Maybe that's what they're not allowed to tell me because maybe they're not, maybe, allegedly, they're not allowed to tell me that Chanel wants to keep producing the giant bottles as prestige and take away the little ones from the common folk. I am shook. Yana Klar says, for the aspirational customer, they'll still have 225 milliliter bottles for 2,500 euro. Exactly. Aspirational. Speaking of aspirational, check out my aspirational merch. You can wear this next time you go to Chanel. Get it at www.superdacob.com. Yeah, the green screen is messy. Oh, there you go. You can see it better now. Ta-da, magic. Get your aspirational merch the aspirational client and wear this when you go to Chanel next time and be like, honey, I see what you did there. I know you think I'm that aspirational client. So what? It's the aspirational clients that keep your company afloat, honey. All of us buying your lipsticks and your makeup. <sighs> www.superdacob.com or on Amazon. Just search in the Amazon search engine for aspirational Super Dacob. Cling! I'm just really sad because these were beautiful creations. These perfumes are amazing. And maybe they didn't sell. Maybe maybe these little tiny extra bottles didn't really sell that much. And they just thought to themselves, well, we're 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 not gonna make them anymore because nobody's buying them. But but then if nobody's buying them, why are you manufacturing one liter? ginormous bottles of this. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. <laughs> Grief and High Delight says, I'm going to buy the giant bottle and I'm going to start a resell dispensary. Look at you being clever. <laughs> and they also changed their prices for these giant bottles. So basically in the past, you know how it works with perfumes. The smaller the size of the bottle and the more you pay per milliliter. Okay. The bigger the bottle and the more money you save per milliliter. And that used to be the case with the giant bottles of Chanel Number no. 5. Because Chanel Number no. 5 extra used to be made in these giant bottles since, you know, decades now. But the 225 milliliter would cost you more, parfum, Chanel Number no. 5, in the past would cost you more per milliliter than the 400 milliliter bottle, the 450 milliliter bottle per milliliter. And that would cost you less than the 900 milliliter bottle per milliliter. Now they've changed that. And if you check the pricing in France of the Les Exclusives giant bottles, the ratio is exactly the same. If you notice the price as of now, March 2024, I can't guarantee that's going to remain the same in the future. But as we're filming now in March 2024, if you check in the on the French uh, side of the Chanel website and you check the prices of these, of the giants, it's the exact same ratio. 225 milliliter costs you the same per milliliter as 450 mil as 900 mil. So they're not making you save any money anymore. 
which is even more bizarre. It's even more bizarre. They're not incentivizing you at all to purchase the bigger bottle. Because you're not saving money anymore purchasing the biggest bottle like you did in the past. Now you're spending the same amount per milliliter. So might as well buy the smallest bottle because it's not more expensive per milliliter than the biggest bottle. Kev says this level of greed is so transparent and ugly. Nay says, I just bought a $200 3.4 ounce perfume and I thought that was a lot. Now I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, I know. And they're getting us used to this. These huge prices are totally fine. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. So it's the end of an, I mean, it's the end of an era but also so bizarre. Who made this strange decision? You guys, just uh, a year and a half ago, late August 2022, Chanel launched Sycamore Parfum, the extrait of Sycamore, which is gorgeous. Thank God I bought two bottles when it came out. I bought two bottles when it came out. They launched... Sycamore, just one and a half years ago, in extra concentration. In this little tiny 15 ml bottle. Why discontinue it one and a half years after if you've launched it? This also made me think they did not plan to discontinue the Les Exclusives Parfums one and a half years ago. This was not a plan that they had. This is something that they've come up with short term. This is something they've come up with now. This is something new. This is like, it's like something happened at Chanel that stopped them from their regular scheduled, whatever they were thinking of doing with their perfumes and beauty. And it disrupted everything, including the launch of Commit their latest Les Exclusives fragrance. It was supposed, you remember, we were talking about this a year and a half ago. They were supposed to launch the perfume one year ago. And for some reasons, they, they, they canceled the launch, postponed it. They pushed it more than a year, year and a half forward. I mean, into the future. Something is going down at Chanel. Something is not right. And then this decision to cancel the extraits of the Les Exclusives. And another thing, which makes me even more suspicious. Do you guys know what is happening at Chanel Perfumes right now? I have the news for you. The news hit just a day or two ago. Let me read it to you. From cosmeticsbusiness.com, listen to this, you guys. Chanel has named Emilie de Tramassure as its new general manager for its fragrance and beauty division. How coincidental that all of this is happening at the same time. She will take over the role from Barbara Menargue or Menarguez, who will pardon me for butchering the name, who will step down at the end of April this year. End of April coincides with the launch of Comet worldwide, minus Middle East and Paris. A Chanel veteran, de Tramazur joined the French luxury brand. In 1998, and has worked across a number of roles, most recently at regional general manager, as regional general manager of watches and fine jewelry in the U.S. She is said to have spearheaded launches, including Chanel's Gabrielle fragrance in 2017. The brand's first major launch at the time. Prior to starting her career at Chanel, de Tramazur held marketing roles at Unilever 
and Christian Dior's fragrance division. She will assume her role as general manager in September with Molly Megasco, Chanel's head of digital in the U.S., taking over the role in the interim period after Menerguez steps down. De Tramazur's appointment comes after Chanel announced plans to expand its influencer strategy last year with the creation of an Ideation and Creative Influence Strategies team led by Nadej Winter. In other words, Chanel is, in my humble opinion, completely wrong here. They're pushing forward the influencer program. Chanel, let me tell you something. Listen, Linda, I've seen these influencers being invited by the Chanel PR teams to come to the beauty boutiques and given budgets to spend on getting whatever they want. These influencers do not give half a shite about heritage pieces of Chanel. These influencers are egotistically driven sociopaths that just want everything to be about them. It's me, me, me. So they want the newest, they want whatever is flashy, they want whatever is in the news, they're never gonna go for this, you see? These are heritage pieces. These are, this is the history of the brand. But it's not in the news. So if you're going to push forth the influencer program, then you're just going to have the superficial newest item that's going to be pushed and celebrated for five minutes. And then it's going to be dropped like a hot potato because the, that same influencer will be invited by another brand you know, to spearhead their latest hot potato product. And in the meanwhile, these beauties, these treasures, these gems are being discontinued. I pray to the perfume gods that at least Chanel Paris still keeps selling these. You know what I mean? That at least in Paris you can go... And, and also, at least the original four. Cuir de Russie, Gardenia, Bois des Îles, number 22. Those four from the 20s. The Ernest Beau creations. Ernest Beau did not create the Eau de Parfum concentrations of those perfumes. Olivier Polge did. So the only link, even though these have been reformulated a thousand times, okay, still, the only link we still have to the true DNA of the original four, created by Ernest Beau, the only link we have is the parfum. You want to come as close as possible today to Ernest Beau's 20s creation of Cuir de Russie, you do not buy the Eau de Parfum. He never did the Eau de Parfum. You buy the Parfum of Cuir de Russie. Yes, it's reformulated. Still, this is the closest you can get today to Ernest Beau's Cuir de Russie. This is the, as close as you can get today to Ernest Beau's number 22, same applies for Gardenia, and same applies for Bois des Îles. You see, if we lose these, we are losing such a milestone of Chanel heritage and DNA. So I beg of you, Chanel, please at least keep making these 15 milliliter, at least the four original ones, keep them still in rotation or at least sell them in Paris in your flagship 31 Rue Cambon store. At least do that. Yana Klar is asking, Jacob, do you think Olivier Polge will leave soon? So I was told that Olivier Polge's contract is expiring soon. I was also told that allegedly Chanel really wants Olivier Polge to remain. But I've been also told, and this is all alleged, that Olivier Polge is not happy with how much freedom or better said lack thereof he's being given at Chanel. Now, and here I got to say, I'm not blaming Chanel for not giving him too much freedom because quite frankly, and I've said this before you guys, and I'm saying it here again, if Chanel, if you want to be a perfumer at Chanel, you cannot really be very creative. I believe the only way to be a perfumer at Chanel is to be a historian. 
And I think that's where Olivier Polge is a little bit um, handicapped in his job. I think he wants to be more creative, but the job he has is actually of a historian. It's somebody who archives uh, these perfumes. It's somebody who, when they develop a new Chanel perfume, they have to develop it according to the Chanel formulas, according to the Chanel history. So you're not given freedom to experiment too much. You got to stay very much. So if you love being that historian of perfumes, then you can thrive at Chanel, I believe. But if you want to be creative and disruptive and revolutionary, well, then right now, the way Chanel is structured right now, I personally believe you're you're not at the right place working at Chanel if you're all for innovation in these perfumes. Yana Klar says, at the moment, it doesn't look very historic. Well, it is historic because every perfume that's created has the aldehydes, has that typical type of composition of Chanel, you know. Them deleting the extraits is terrible, okay, for sure. But they're still preserving Cuir de Rossi number 22, Bois de Zil Gardenia, in the Eau de Parfum form, which is better than nothing. But you see what I mean? There's a lot to think about here. And I do not know if Olivier Polge is going to accept the renewal of his contract. It is a huge prestige to work for Chanel. A lot of people would give a lot to be able to be the head perfumer of Chanel, even with their hands tied and not completely free to do whatever they want. To work for Chanel, it's, it's a colossus in the perfume industry. To be appointed artistic director of Chanel Perfumes means that you are at the top of the world, really. And you're even higher than Guerlain. Uh, I know that Guerlain has a rich perfume history and tradition and heritage, but the problem is that Guerlain has been sold to LVMH. You see, Guerlain is no longer independent. Chanel is. Chanel is still a privately owned company. And that makes Chanel higher ranking in my book than Guerlain. Add to that the fact that the new head of at Guerlain Beauty, I don't know her name, said in one interview that Guerlain is not a perfume house anymore. They are a skincare and makeup house. Perfumes are second grade. They're on the back burner. And I'm like, is wow. What is going on in this world? Everything is upside down. Everything is upside down. And in fact, very interesting how Guerlain, if you look at what they're churning out from their Mathieu, uh, uh, L'Art de la Mathieu collections, everything is very meh. From time to time, there's some beautiful perfume being launched, like Chalimar Millésime d'Iris, which is a masterpiece, but that's like one in a million fortuitous coincidence potentially so i don't know what's going on here you guys i really hope that they're not just going to produce the giant bottles and that's it because if that's the case then really the elitism i just i can't so at least chanel please keep making these little 15 milliliter les exclusive extraits at least make them available in in paris and then we're all gonna go on a pilgrimage once every couple of years to go and buy these little bottles in Paris. And if you don't even sell them in Paris anymore and nowhere anymore, then I'm sorry to say, Chanel, but you've, you've lost such an important part of your history. And this really saddens me. This breaks my heart. Really does. And your, your marketing strategies have been a joke. The only new release we got this year, well, this year, no, we're getting Comet, but at the in 2023, last year, for the Les Exclusives range, the only like special new thing you had was a cardboard box made in China, okay, to put in three 75 mil eau de parfums. And you had to purchase the three of them in order to get said cardboard box made in China. 
that's as far as the Les Exclusives innovation went last year. A cardboard box that was given to you only after you purchased a three 75 mil Eau de Parfum perfumes, which is $900 back then, plus tax. A cardboard box made in China, not even made in France, no, made in China. This breaks my heart, really, because you know how much I love these perfumes, how much I love Chanel fragrances. This breaks my heart. Very disappointed. This is, you know, this is worse than a price increase. Isn't that funny? Just when we thought that Chanel could not sink any lower, we were thinking the worst they could do was to raise their prices several times a year. And then when the quality started going down, we thought that's the worst they can do. The worst they can do is lower the quality while the prices keep going up. And just when we thought that that was the worst they could do, now they go and discontinue their heritage. Now they like completely delete it. I'm scared to say that I think this is the worst they can do. Now I'm really scared to say that this is the worst they can do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you have any other intel about them discontinuing the Les Exclusives in order to bring them back again, maybe next year in a totally revamped new version, new packaging, maybe they're gonna bring them back in little 7.5 mil sprays instead. Let me know. I mean, I'm just now trying to find some hope at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? I have no intel on them re-releasing the Les Exclusives, but I'm just thinking I'm hopeful. I'm just hoping that, hey, what about they discontinue these and then they bring them back as little tiny spray refillables? Never going to happen. But one can hope, right? And I am always want to always hope and never give up on love. So thank you, Yana, so much for bringing this to my attention. And thank you to all of the sales associates from Chanel that have written me to confirm this sad news. Love you loads. Subscribe, thumb up this video if you've enjoyed it, and never give up on love. Bye.